Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed Easter to you all. We're glad you can join us here at Christ Church Lutheran for our online service this morning. Uh, we hope it is a wonderful Easter, uh, a restful Easter, that you get to spend time with family and with your loved ones. Uh, we miss having you here. Obviously, it's not the same uh, celebrating with no people in the pews, but we know that we are unified in Christ, in spirit. We know that we are connected to each other, even though we are physically distant from each other. And so I look forward to sharing this Easter service with you all. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we celebrate the risen Savior, we recognize a few things about ourselves. Uh, number one, that we are sinful. We're not perfect. But Jesus is perfect for us. And so we have this opportunity as a body, as a unified body in Christ, to come to our God in confession, to tell him our sins, to uh, own up to our failures and our mistakes, and to know that when we confess honestly that God hears us, he loves us, and he desires to show us mercy. So please join me in a prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, we know that we have sinned against you and against one another. Lord, we know that we are not perfect, and so we thank you for the gift of Jesus, who was perfect in our place, who suffered and died so that we may have life in him. God, we thank you for raising him from the dead. We thank you for his power and the love that you have shown us through the cross, Lord. We take a moment of silent confession now.
Almighty God, who is rich in mercy and loves to show us mercy, has given his son to die for you. And it is in the name and in the power of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, that I declare the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. first scripture reading for this morning comes from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised, and on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. As she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet, they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A blessed Easter to you this day. We are grateful to worship together in this fashion. This is clearly one of the most unusual Easter's that we have ever experienced in our lives, but the truth is still foundational. Christ has risen, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is so much more significant to us in this year maybe than any other, because we know what really matters. I chose to look at John chapter 20 and verse 19 where it says, On the same day of the evening, being in the first day of the week when the doors were shut, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. That scripture is actually from a week after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they are stuck behind closed doors for fear. And Jesus comes and says, peace be to you. I pray on this Easter Sunday, you would have peace. Even in the midst of times that clearly challenge our peace. Jesus said, peace, I leave with you my peace, I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. We listen to the news and we think, well, is that a piece of good news? Or we listen to another thing, is that a piece of good news? I have good news for you. God knows. And in this day, you can have peace because God is the author of all peace. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, he said, I have power. I have power over all of this. And therefore, you can rest in him. Make no mistake, at the heart of these days is human tragedy. We don't have to go too far. Maybe you in your world do not have someone you know specifically. But as time goes on, we all do and we all will. Where people have had such tragedy of losing loved ones and they can't grieve with them. The tragedy of the unexpected. But at the heart of these days as well, I would tell you, are the heroes. And there are no greater heroes in our time on this Easter Sunday than the healthcare workers who place themselves again and again in harm's way for the rest of us. I was sent a, a prayer by one of the members of the church here. I want to read it for you because it's being used right now in a hospital in our community as a positive encouragement. Here are the words. When we struggle to repair and heal this world, when we rise above our fear and offer compassion and love, we're a blessing. When we gather the strength to give of ourselves to those who so desperately need our assistance, instead of averting our gaze, we are a blessing. The sages say, whenever we reach out to someone who is suffering, we make ourselves a blessing. Sacred voices echo across the hospital floors and across our world speaking softly. Bless you. Thank you. You are a blessing. For those of you that are medical professionals hearing my voice, you are a blessing. We are grateful for you placing yourself in regards to who else needs you in a very specific way saw a text this last week. A person asked, please keep myself and my co-workers in the hospital in your prayers. I cannot put into words how truly awful it is. We're all stressed and worried and fearful of wanting to take the best care of our patients, but concerned about getting sick and maybe bringing that sickness home to our families. I've never been more fearful to go into work before. My co-workers and myself I've just cried in our cars before we go to work. It's very hard. Today, what gave me comfort was the 23rd Psalm, to remember no matter what's going on, God is by my side and will never leave me. Make no mistake, these are heroes during this tragedy. We pray for them. We pray for you. If you are that person, we pray for grace. At the heart of these days are heroes in particular, I ask you today on this Easter Sunday that you would pray for New York. We got the news that clearly there's no other place in the world that has more cases of this terrible virus than New York, more than any country. I was in communication with the, the spiritual leader of our denomination in New York, and he shared this with me. 
I asked him, how can I pray? And he says, yes, thank you. This is not an easy time. About 25 churches are directly affected with deaths of members. Roughly 45 members have already died, averaging seven a day. I have a young pastor who already has 12 deaths from COVID-19 in his church. These are members that have died alone. Members who are buried with no one at the graveside except a prod and a camera. These are unprecedented times. But Jesus is still Lord of all. The church has a role to play to speak into this grief and anxiety. Thank you for your prayers. Can I ask you today on Easter to pray for New York? Pray for those who are experiencing maybe something quite different than you are experiencing at the heart of this difficulty. But I would tell you as well, at the heart of this day, in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of heroes, this is a day of hope. Hope is the confident expectation that God has acted and will act. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How can we have hope? Hope is not a a wishful thought. Hope is a sure foundation, and it's based upon this day, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The reason you can have hope and the reason I can have hope is because of Jesus himself. And what he has done for us. Truly, these are odd days. I make no mistake. When I was a child and my parents would drop my brothers and I off at my uncle and aunt's farm in central Wisconsin, we'd find all kinds of things to do. And one of the things we would do is that we would do an analysis of the chicken coop. Not if you've ever done it, but you have to have lots of hours to be able to do that. We would sit on a rock next to it, and we'd watch what the pecking order was. In other words, which chicken was the top chicken, and which chicken everybody else picked on. And in between, and we charted it. Who was the top chicken? Who was the last chicken? Because in the chicken coop, when they're all in that confined area together, Things that are difficult happen. How are you doing being all cooped up? Can I be so bold to suggest if you're sitting next to somebody today, can you say to them, on this Easter Sunday, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. On this Easter Sunday, I've been cooped up and I'm sorry for the way I have acted. On this Easter Sunday, I'm really not truly myself because what's going on we function this way and candidly as we're all cooped up we ask ourselves some questions there are some fears our health will I get this our finance how will this further impact me future what will my life look like after this and these go in waves don't they and we can watch tv and we'll hear snippets of information and Did you hear? And grief, being in grief is exhausting. Being in grief for this period of weeks is exhausting. Anxiety, collective anxiety is exhausting. Uncertainty of what will happen next is exhausting. And it just makes things more and more difficult. And even as it is odd, when we don't have opportunity, can I tell you that I'm off. I'm a little off because I look to people's faces to interact and I have some level of measure from the ping pong that happens interpersonally. And I want to confess before you, there are times in my life I've said this, you've heard me say it, I really just want everybody in the world to stop so that I can get caught up. I didn't really mean it. I don't really want it. Because this is very disconcerting. And in in essence, there's an element of loneliness in the midst of it because we don't have normal human interactions. There was an article some years ago where researchers claimed that loneliness would be classified as an epidemic by 2030. The former U.S. Surgeon General described loneliness as one of the country's most pressing health risks. The effects of social isolation are so severe that studies have shown that 
It actually has the power to remap the makeup of human cells. I wonder about that. I wonder about loneliness in this time. I wonder what the impact is and the lasting impact is. So as we're cooped up, as we need to ask forgiveness from each other, recognize the truth of the gospel is that which does not change. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Whatever else is true, that's true. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he showed that his sacrifice was full and complete. He showed the truth of what God gave to us in Christ. I pray you believe. I pray that's your confidence. Regardless of anything else that's uncertain in these times, your confidence is that God loves you. Your confidence is that Christ came for you. Your confidence that your faith is secure. In these times, control, who, who really has it? I don't have control. I'd like to have control. I wish I was clever enough to anticipate things. I don't. We're trying to figure out, by God's grace, what's next? What do we do? How do we react? How should we be? Hope, who has it? I pray you have hope today. Certainty, who has it? The only thing that seems certain is there's a level of uncertainty about what's going to occur because, in fact, we are fundamentally off the map. There's a book called Off the Map, Places That Are Unknown, and, and what does it tell us about the world? We're now in uncharted territory. We are off the map. We are pioneers in this new time. Who would have thought? And I'm not sure how this all fits in, but I say on a personal note, for the last 15 months of my wife and I's life, we've had another person living in our home, a young man named Ji Hao Li. He went by Matthew in this country. And do you know where he's from? Wuhan, China. And so the past 15 months, this young man who was born and raised in Wuhan, China, was living with us and just went back home two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Now, and the other day, coming in to our home at our front door was a box and in that box is this package. Do you know what it is? It's masks. Kindly, really kindly, his family is concerned about us. And so therefore they send masks to us across the Pacific Ocean so that we can be safe. There's something kind and sweet and poignant about that where he feels more safe in Wuhan, China than he does in Phoenix, Arizona. We're in uncharted territories. We're off the map. And, and there's an article by Tim Keller where he talks about that this experience in our lives is like smelling salts. Smelling salts that wakes us up. I've never really thought about smelling salts other than in movies, but the idea that somehow that activity would get our attention and wake us up. Clearly, this has gotten our attention. I pray, what is that attention? He writes an article, and it's worth your reading, called The Fright of Death, How Conscience Makes Us Cowards of Us All, where he uses the language, where Jesus says the statement, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives by believing in me will never die. He talks about death as the great interruption and the great schism and the great insult. And, and the, this circumstance in our lives, here's a great quote. All the wars and plagues have never raised the death toll. In other words, we all will face at some point our eternity but I pray in the midst of facing our eternity, you have the confidence of God's love for you in Jesus Christ. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the greatest quote he has is, everything in this life is temporary except for God's love. May we be woken up to that truth. Everything is temporary. So many things have been taken away from us. So many things have been changed. So much has been altered. 
But everything in this life is temporary except for God's love and this confidence on this Easter Sunday. You know my prayer? Ephesians chapter 1. Can I ask you on this Easter Sunday that you might read Ephesians chapter 1. For it says, I pray the eyes of your heart would be enlightened. That you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. So how are you seeing life right now? That the eyes of your heart would be wide open. And you may see his love and may have his hope. And it goes on in that chapter that the same mighty power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is available for us. In recent days, I have heard an incredible experience. A pastor's son whose mom passed away in the closing days of last year in her funeral was in January. Her son was asked to do the eulogy and here are some of his words. As he's talking to God, didn't you see the cancer, God? Didn't you hear us? Why didn't you do what we're asking of you? He goes on to say, because there are only always two answers to your prayers. She was either going to be healed or she was going to be healed. She was either going to live or she was really going to live. She's either going to be with family or she's going to be with family. Either she was going to be well taken care of or she was going to be well taken care of. Victory belongs to me because what I've already done for you. The two answers to your prayer are yes and yes. Because victory belongs to Jesus. We don't have to fear. The answer is yes. We have life. We don't have to fear because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. I pray in this day, can I just say I miss you? I miss you. This is going on now for almost a month and it seems like I'm kind of disoriented in, in how one relates. But this is Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And you can have hope and I can have hope in the midst of this tragedy because of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. I pray for the details of your life and the circumstances of your life. And I pray that soon we be reunited again as the body of Christ in this place. But I pray that right now in your heart and your soul you may have confidence because of the resurrection of Christ. I spoke to my dad this morning. Can I just tell you, I'm, a, I'm afraid for my dad. He's locked in. He's not able to go outside his room. He took a fall yesterday. He's okay. But all that kind of stuff just disorients me. And as we're talking, and we talk about the same stuff, we talk about Wisconsin, we talk about food, uh, we talk about what he's doing, what he's watching, how he's feeling. And at the end of our conversation, he said these words. May your day be progressively wonderful. <laughs> That's just tremendous. My dad has never said those words to me before in my 57 years of life. May your day be progressively wonderful. Can I leave you with that thought that my dad gave me, I give to you. May your day be progressively wonderful because on this Easter, we acknowledge Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May God's grace be yours today. May God's joy be yours today. May your Easter be progressively wonderful. God bless you. We love you. Please pray with me. Lord God, on this Easter, may we know your truth. That in the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the tomb, we have confidence. Not just for our life, but our life to come. We do pray for New York. We pray for all health care workers. We pray for all who are grieving in such difficult ways. We pray for your protection and your mercy upon this world. But we give you thanks that on this day we can have the truth and the knowledge 
that you are present with us. May you, by your grace, give us joy and confidence even in the midst of things that are off the map, uncharted territory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. A blessed Easter. On this Resurrection Day, we pray. Lord God, we pray for mercy for our world, especially for New York. We pray for families. We pray for marriages. We pray for children. We pray for those who are overtaken in fear. May you give us peace. We pray for doctors and nurses, wisdom and skill for protection, for all those who place their lives in for our protection. We ask you, Lord God, for mercy for this world, mercy for our lives, and we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ and his resurrection on this day. We pray that you would bless our families, that we would be safe and brave, and that we would walk in faith during these unbelievable times. But we ask that you would ground us, ground us in the truths that we know are true, when it seems like everything has changed, we know nothing has fundamentally changed that ultimately matters. And that is your love for us. 
we gather all of our prayers before you in the prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. On this Easter Sunday, let me just say three things. One is we pray you are safe and are encouraged today. As well, we want to tell you there are ways to serve if you are so inclined. I encourage you to pray, in particular for New York. And three, if there's a way that you want to help, we continue to have Wednesday food distribution from St. Mary's, but they'll accept all kinds of things that other families desperately need. This past week, I received a phone call from an individual at one of the nursing homes down the street, and they say there are so many people who are shut up in their particular little room with nothing to be able to do, and they asked for us to reach out. And so we are starting a process called Bags of Hope. Bags of Hope is nothing more than a lunch bag from your house that has arts and crafts supplies or something that someone who doesn't have the ability to get out gives them some way to say, your life matters to us. We love you, we know you're alone, and we don't want you to feel alone. So if you're able to help in any and all of those ways, we would welcome it. We pray that you are well. We pray that you are helping other people know that they are not alone until we can all meet together again prayerfully soon. God bless you. A blessed Easter to you. God's grace.